Hey guys, RC here. Welcome back to Bullbound College Football. This is episode nine, and I know I said episode nine last episode, but that was a foobar. So this is actually episode nine, and we are picking up with recruiting. And I'm on the same screen. I'm recording this right after last episode, and we had decided to go after Gordon White, a running back, and also we we were lucky enough to nail his pitch. At least I think we did. And we did a visit. So we have a chance here. He's got interest in us. We've got a chance to get double bonus points in the recruiting process by nailing the pitch and with the visit. Hopefully, hopefully. So we'll take a look at that. All right, let's get back into recruiting here, though. So we have the watch list and we did the running back. All right, fullback, receiver. Now remember, we, we said that that quarterback we were going to offer him because take a look at these catching remember that quarterback Foreman had a catch ability of 67 and a running ability which is how well he runs after he catches the ball uh, of 62 the highest receiver we've got here is a 55 with a 39 running ability not very good and I know one of the guys in the league that dominates year in and year out. Uh, he historically will draft running backs and change them to receivers. Uh, but we found a quarterback that we could do it with. And we can always scout some more running backs, right? So I'm going to take a So I want them sorted out this way. And you have to do that in ratings. Now I'm going to go back to recruiting. So now I can kind of see some more information. And you notice the name stayed in the same order. All right, so Goodwin we know is a 10 interest. If we click on him, he's got a low durability, good GPA, good, you know, above average catching ability. So let's go ahead and recruit him, offer his scholarship. And I know I like this over here, but I really need this right now because this is more into what we're doing. So Goodwin, a receiver, location, and style of play. And you can see style of play is not important. So we know location is the correct answer. So we've got an option there as well. Uh, let's see. We're going to go ratings again. So I'm going to, I'm going to recruit this guy, but I'm not going to offer him a scholarship. Now, I may come back and pull that. Now, here's the thing. Once you have advanced and offered a scholarship or started to recruit, if you pull those, those, the player will react in a negative fashion. Okay. All right. So we've got four on the roster or offered because we just offered good one. We need five, but we know we're going to retrain that quarterback. And you'll get walk-ons, and sometimes at this level, your walk-ons can play for you. Uh, so don't be scared of that. All right, he's only got a 45. I don't like him, and I don't need a tight end. But we need upgrades everywhere. So we're, we're looking right now. So let's keep going down. No tackles. All right, we got a couple of guards, but they can't block well. Now, guard, we might be able to retrain as a tight end. Now, we didn't see a tight end we liked a minute ago. He could be a pass-catching tight end. 269, 316, that's a little heavy. It would be hard to get him retrained. So I'm going to stay away from that. All right, we do have a defensive end here. Uh, he has a 55 pass rush, defending the run of 46. So he's more of an edge guy. He can tackle decently, and he's got decent coverage skills if he has to drop back into, say, a zone package. Durability is only a 47, and his GPA is a 2.0. I don't think I want to take a gamble on him that marginal. He's got marginal skill. He's a one-star. But, you know, if he had better other numbers, but I don't want to really waste a scholarship on marginal talent that may not even be available. You know, because as they say in football, in real life, and this is American football, the best ability is availability. If they can't even make get on the field for you because they're always hurt, they're not doing you any good. So we're going to move away from him. 
All right, we do have an inside linebacker. I don't need one, but again, we're looking at upgrades. This guy looks really good. He is interested. His durability, see, this is a concern, but he's actually really talented. Good tackling, average pass rush. He can defend the pass. So I'm going to go ahead and recruit this guy and offer him a scholarship. And we're going to jump over here to the inside linebacker. It's prestige and style of play. Well, we know prestige is not important. So it's going to be style of play. And we will nail that one. All right, outside linebacker. I do need one. Would like more. All three of these are two stars, and all three of these look really good. So I'm going to go ahead and recruit all of them. And you can see, when, I like using this screen because it stays on the recruiting effort, and I can just use my up and down arrows to change that. So we're going to do that. Now we can go into these three guys, and outside linebacker is right here. So the first one is Swift prestige and chance to win well we don't know either so i'm not going to put anything there moss style of play and location don't know either one and grove location and prestige so a lot of times you can tell prestige by who they're who they're interested in uh, if they're, you know, like if this guy was interested in Florida State and and LSU and Michigan and Ohio State, you could pretty much say, yeah, he's interested in a high prestige school. Where you can use that to make your decision, if prestige is what his interest is, look at these clubs that have offered him. How does your prestige rank meet up with theirs? If you're really outclassed, say by Troy which we're not, but let's say Troy had a 42, uh, you know, and prestige was what he was interested in. I can't compete with Troy. So I might want to cut bait and pull my offer and move on to someone else. But again, he's got a lot of guys interested, but I think we've got a shot at him. All right, cornerback. We do need one. We would like more. We're going to sort these by coverage and... So Nash, we've already done him. That was our email guy. The question one of you guys posed, and I forget who posed it, but the question was, do you look at ratings? Well, here's an example where you have the red players, which are one star, and you have the orange players, which are two stars. But if you look, this guy has a 57 compared to a 52 and a 47. I would say this guy is probably the better option even though he's not as good on the star rating. He also has a high GPA, low durability, and he can't tackle all that well. But he is a defender, so kind of in the Deion Sanders mold, just not that good. He can defend, can't really tackle. This guy, though, he's not much worse, but he's significantly better at tackling. And he's got a slightly better durability, and the GPA is not a huge hit. So let's go ahead and recruit this guy. We're going to close that. Now, I always come back to this screen because I can get a snapshot of what I'm looking at. It also, as we spend the money, it tells me how much money I have left, how many scholarships. At the lower levels, only offer out what you can afford. Don't offer a scholarship to a player that you can't afford to recruit. Because you, if you're not recruiting them actively, you basically have no shot. All right, so cornerbacks were up to five. All right, I do have a pretty solid free safety here. I don't really need one, but I could use an upgrade probably. Good GPA, good durability. He can actually intercept the ball because he can catch. And he's good at coverage. So you know what? Let's go ahead and pop him. And this is David Chandler, location and prestige. I don't know those, so we're going to move on. Strong safety, and we've got a couple of kickers. I have one kicker. Uh, now, kickers, you don't see anything here, I don't believe. You can look at their actual stats, but there's no kick power rating that we can see. You do see that in the game once you sign them. 
but you're really going off of stats here. So we're looking at his field goal percent, his long punt accuracy. Uh, you know, that's kind of what we're looking at. And then you can go in and look at your scout. Never going to have the strongest leg, but had average strength. Uh, but average leg strength isn't out of the question. He takes coaching advice very well and should get his accuracy up to a solid level. When he maxes out his talents, he'll be as consistent as any kicker in the in the country. Should eventually become good enough to do an adequate job of handling kickoffs. So if you need a if you need a kicker. You know, those are how you would evaluate one. I'm not really looking for that right now. So let's go ahead and pop out. I want to go now, now that I've started offering scholarships, I want to make sure I invite those guys. Now you can still use the concept of not duplicating positions. Okay. And because we've got this and all these guys in yellow, these are guys on our watch list, right? So I've already decided they're not very good. So I'm going to go ahead and, and accept a visit from this guy. And let's go ahead and scout him. Now, just by accepting the visit, he gets put on your watch list. If you put in recruiting, it will automatically scout and add to the watch list. But uh, so I want to invite him. And you know what? Let's go ahead and accept a visit from Dunbar as well. He's already on the watch list. Let's scout him there. Six foot four, mobile quarterback with a good GPA. Just in case he is good, I'm going to go ahead and pop recruiting on him. And then let's go back to our recruiting screen. I've got $1,000 left and seven scholarships. Again, I'm not worried about offering all the scholarships. Right now, it's about trying to get the you know, quality players that I have a shot at and not just signing anybody. So because we haven't assigned the recruiting, we aren't going to lose many of them, but you did see we did lose a couple down to an eight or a seven. All right, but let's go back to ranking here, right? And let's look at the entire pool and all positions. And we'll sort by interest, all right? And then we'll go back where we were before. Now, each week, you may see some movement on players that you haven't looked at before. So you can see we've actually got two new players, including this Richardson guy. Now, he's 1,500 to scout. So I'm going to not go after him just yet. Let's go down to the nines. I do have a defensive tackle. He's in Louisiana, so you can see he's cheaper. So let's go ahead and scout him. And what I'm looking for is another, there's another defensive tackle in Louisiana. And we'll scout him. And so now we've added two players with decent ability, and we're good. So let's advance the week, but let's double check, right? So do I have any money left that I can spend? No. Do I have scholarships? Yes. So here's the question. Do I want to offer scholarships? In this case, I know I don't. So then we want to go back to visits. Have I used all my visits? Yes. So we're ready to advance the week. And now we have moved into week 10. I always do a save every couple of weeks when I'm playing solo just because too many experiences with the game crashing. All right, so now you see week eight. I haven't deleted any of these. Now we have three emails. So we have the recommendations. That's this one. We also have the recommended pitches, which will now be changed. And we have a recruit summary. This will show for this week, did anybody that you were scouting commit to your program or did they go somewhere else? And this is anybody on your watch list, anybody that you're recruiting, right? So what we want to do is I want to come into the recommended. Now, remember, we had quite a few guys that we were able to pinpoint their, their pitch last week, right? So they're going to drop off of this list. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to red. Right. And you might not be able to tell the difference, but I can. Uh, and again, I wish my color on this ever since I got this 4K monitor, it's just been a little weird. Uh, we're going to sort this again. And then what I do is I kind of start at the bottom. So if they're only black, that means we already picked them out. So I'm going to delete them. There's white. We did him. Now, here's one that only has one, but it's in red. 
That means that's in, in the new week, that's one of the defensive tackles that we just added. All right, and everybody else is the same. So let's get into this week of recruiting. So we've done that. We've checked our emails. All right, let's go into our recruiting screen, and we're going to go back into our watch list. Now, this is where it would have been helpful to make a note of who we offered or who these new guys were, but I know that we did look at a quarterback, and look at that, Weaver, the one we just added, has a 60, and he's a Juco, which means he could come in and start this year, and then you can look at his stats, 66% completion, that's good, uh, 23 touchdowns, 18 interceptions. I'm willing to bet that his instincts and intelligence are gonna be a little low, but not horribly, but, you know, if he had really good instincts, he, he'd have 23 inter touchdowns and six interceptions, let's say. But we've already scouted him, remember, and done recruiting. So, and we put an offer on him, and he's interested. So let's take a look at him. Well, I'm going to show you how I would do this. Now that I'm into my routine, I know I want him. And it was Foreman that we offered. Remember, he had the good catching. So Marino, I don't want. We're going to go ahead and remove him. Gregory, I don't want. Remember, I don't want. Now, here's another thing. As long as they're on your watch list and you have not picked a pitch, they will continue to show up here. So what you can do, if you want, is you can pick a pitch at random. I'm just not going to worry about it. I just want to get them off the list right now. But if you don't want your list cluttered up, because He'll show up there now for the rest of the season, or the rest of the recruiting season. Uh, Broussard, I don't want, and Dunbar. Uh, you know what? Dunbar, uh, he had a 39 durability. He can run pretty well. He's six foot four. Too bad he can't catch. So you know what? I'm going to remove him. So White, we've got an offer on. All right, receivers, good one. All right, Walker. We looked at him, right? No, we did not. Okay, Walker's one of the guys we just looked at. So he's got a 78 durability, a 53 catching ability. So let's go ahead and recruit him and offer a scholarship. Now, you see, I've only got $2,000 left because all the scouting money, all the, all the recruiting money is still tied up. The only money I got back this, this week is those three players that we scouted. And remember, two of those guys were in Louisiana and they were only $500 a piece. So we have to be a little careful now what we want to do. Emory, we, we did recruit. I'm going to go ahead and offer him as well because we've already got, a, we've already got him recruited. Uh, Glover, let's go ahead and pull him off the watch list. Velasquez. All right. Tight end. Didn't like him. Although, let's jump into our team roster and let's look at tight ends. So Fleming is really the only good one that we've got. So that guy might not be a bad tight end after all. Problem is I can't afford to recruit him because of his location, which is in Texas. It's a minimum of 3000 4000 if I want to max it. So I'm going to keep him on the list for right now. Later on, when I get some money, if nobody's come after him, then I've got somebody there I can go after. I'm going to go back to recruiting as well so I can see if I've offered him. So Decker has fallen to a three. We're going to remove that watch. Uh, Schultz, remember, he couldn't block. So we're going to go ahead and remove that too. That's our defensive end. He's not horrible. There was something about him, though. Uh, his GPA. So I'm going to leave him just as a fallback alternative. All right. This guy is really good. And he's only $1,000 because he's in Louisiana, which means I can do a max recruit and offer on him. Now, Davis, he can defend the run, which is more important for your defensive tackle. So I'm going to go ahead. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to. Clear that action. I'm going to re recruit him at a thousand, and then I can recruit him at a thousand as well and offer both of them. Now, what I'm going to want to do is when I do get some extra money, is I'm going to want to raise these guys to the $2,000 level. But 
you know, we're going to give that a shot, part of that building the wall, right? Hamilton, we've already recruited. All three of our linebackers we've done. All right, let's take a look here. So Howard, we're going to let go. Yates. And what I'm doing is I'm making sure I don't have recruiting or scholarships on them already. Now this guy, he's not as great at covering, but he can really tackle. That might be a guy that we'd want to sign and then retrain as a safety or maybe a Viper linebacker, uh, you know, middle linebacker, something like that. So we'll leave him on the list. We'll leave all these other guys on the list. Chandler, we've got an offer. And kickers, I'm just not worried about right now. And now the athletes, they will also show up right here. So, but athlete is just one of those unique positions. They're going to be more likely to be able to play other positions if you retrain them. So that's what that is all about. Uh, and let's go in. So Hamilton, we're going to get a visit. Uh, Grove, I want these linebackers coming in. I like my two defensive tackles, although only one of them's on the board right now. And let's get Chandler. And you know what? No, eh. Yeah, let's get Foreman because I think he is going to be the best wide receiver if we get him. So let's bring him and advance the week. Did you remember to go back and check your spots? Make sure you did everything. I hope you did. All right, so we're into week 11, and we just rinse and repeat now. So what I would do here is I would delete everything I've got there. We're going to go back to, I don't want week 8 anymore, so we could delete that. But remember, this is the week 9 recommended pitches. We're going to copy, paste, and then we are going to go to week 10. And we're going to copy and paste that. And I want to make this second set for the most recent week red or whatever. You know, it's just so I can tell the difference. That's, that's kind of why I do that. All right. And then we will sort. And I did forget to do one thing. You guys needed to remind me. I forgot to go back at the end and look at the pitches. All right. So let me show you how I would do that. So we're going to look at all the positions on the watch list. I'm going to sort by position, and we're just going to go down, and I'm going to click on this box. And you can see we're in our third week of recruiting. We have three pitches open, and we're starting at quarterback. So Weaver, Prestige, and Location. My coaches are stuck on those two. Prestige and Location have not come up, so I can't tell yet. All right. White, we already did. Emory is a wide receiver. So you see here, chance to win and location last week. This week, it's location and style. Now, style we can rule out, but because we have one consistent in here and two separate ones, I know location is the right answer. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that. Walker, same thing. You see how it's head coach and location this week? but it was location and playing time last week, so I know it's location again. Now, here's where this comes into play. He's in Florida. I'm in Louisiana. Odds are Central Florida, Florida Atlantic, Florida International, Florida State, South Florida, all of those guys are going to have the advantage. So I might want to bail. Now, this is where, going back into that other email, and this is broken out by those that you are recruiting with offers and everybody else on your watch list. So we're looking for Emory. Now, he is still high, and he only has one other offer. Now, this is where you would want to track. Remember how I did this? I copied and pasted this the first week, and I didn't do it last week? Well, now let's go back and see what he was last week. He was average and now he's high. So he's actually increased his interest in us. So even though he has all of those other offers, it was him, right? No, it was not. Oh, uh, it was Walker. Okay. Go back and relook at that. All right. So we're looking for wide receiver Walker. 
All right, here he is. So he's average with five offers this week. Average is the key thing I'm looking for now. He was average with four last week. So he hasn't gone down, but I have now determined that location is his main interest point. So now I have to decide, do I want to continue after this guy or do I want to come off of him? Well, you can see this is not grayed out, which means I just made his offer this week, okay? The other thing is, have I given him a visit yet? And the answer is no. So let's go ahead and pop a visit and nail his pitch, and then we'll take another look next week, and I'll be able to make a better determination next week if it's a guy that I want to stick, st stick with going after him or cut bait on him and move on to somebody else. All right, now here's an issue. So Shad Davis, I've been looking at interest, or, uh, but now I want to look here. So Davis is down to a four. So we're going to go ahead and remove him. So anything below a six, don't waste your time. Just don't waste your time. All right, so now we're going to go back in. We're going to look at Charles Moore, the defensive end, location. So which one would you guess this would be? Right? Charles Moore, right there. And this line right here is the current week. So, which one do you think we're going to pick here? Well, if you said style of play, you're right. So, we're going to go with that. Richard Davis, I don't have the information there. Ricky Farrell, again, we know it's location. So, you don't have to wait to see it pop up here as long as you are judging it off of these emails. Okay, now here's, here's one that will help you out. All right, Eric Bello is a cornerback, right? So he's right here. So last week it was head coach, style of play. This week it's the same. So we come over here, and we don't have head coach yet, but we do have style of play. But what do you notice here? All three of these are very important. Only three of the six options will ever be very important. So that means head coach cannot be very important because we've already disclosed what his three very important are, which means that, it's the, uh, that it is style of play. So we're going to lock that one in. So that's another way to kind of use all of your indicators on what the right answer is. Now, see, this is, this is one. His is either playing time or prestige. We know prestige is, but only two of the three are, are exposed right now as very important. So playing time still could be. So I don't really have enough to make a decision on him. It's 50-50, but I don't want to make a 50-50 guess. Lewis Nash, and I should have done this right away because... Location is very important, and it's one of the two that my coaches are telling me. What do we know about him? He wants to play with us because his girlfriend's coming here, which means location is very important to him. So, uh, so I knew that was location. I just forgot. All right, I have finished out the list of all the guys. Uh, I still have three scholarships left but I'm not worried about it. So let's put a cut right here. We will advance the week and we'll come back and look at the results of this week. Now, keep in mind, when you're with a lower prestige team, you don't usually sign recruits till later on, typically around week seven of the recruiting process. Uh, well, maybe not that long. Week four or five. So week 12 or 13. So we've got about another week left. We might sign somebody this week, but I would expect next week or the week after. So hit that like button, subscribe for me, and uh, we will talk to you next episode.